us Christians don't care. We don't think about Lil Nas X. And we won't let... Uh, did you hear that? <laughs> you can't fart when you talk about Lil Nas X. I'm great. flirting. <laughs> 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 Does your ass feel queef too? Like how? Before? I just did. <laughs> <laughs> why, why did you do? Yeah, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast, and this week's episode is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is the all in one website platform for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. Whether you're just starting out or managing a growing brand, Squarespace makes it easy to create a beautiful website, engage with your audience, and sell anything from products to content to time all in one place, all on your terms. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to www.squarespace.com slash idiots to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash idiots to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Let's start the show. Hezzy! What's up? Man, thank God you're not a football fan, man. Why? Because you don't care. You don't care about what's happening in the NFL playoffs right now. What's happening? You have no emotional attachment to anything. What's happening? I mean, for me, my Dallas Cowboys lost. But I feel like you'd get used to this by now. Yeah, I don't even care. Like, it's just like, yo, people get mad at me. Like, uh, this morning on the radio, they're like, yo, you know, you, you got to stop saying the Cowboys going to the Super Bowl every year. Why, what else am I supposed to say? We're going to be 12 and 5 and we're going to get eliminated in the wild card playoff game? Yeah, like, you can't say that. Like, fuck that. We don't, you don't, you're not realistic when it comes to your football team. Exactly. You're supposed to dream. That's why we do it. You jump out the goddamn window, 100%. man. 100%. But y'all suck. We do suck. <laughs> why do you think you suck? It's just a legacy of sucking dicks? I just think it's one of those things, lack of discipline. Um, it's interesting, though, right? Because you think about the Dallas Cowboys. They are the world's most Football valuable fran sports franchise, period. More than soccer More teams? More than soccer teams. They're the most valuable sports franchise, period. What's this, Alex? What was that? What was that? You know what I'm saying? What, what was that? I don't think it's an accurate statement. Look, Look it up. But I'm not 100% sure. Bruh. So. Google it. Google it, dude. That, so. that really, yo. That's Charlotte's sensitive today, yo. I just yeah, want to let you know. Oh, yeah. That really bothered, bothered him, yo. No, but you don't. But, but, but what is this, Alex? You don't like, hey, what's little Stevie Wonder. I could have yeah, tried. You don't got to hit the Stevie uh, when he's giving you what facts. That, mean? that could have been. What, the, what does that, that mean, bro? agreeing with you. You know how they agree like that? Indians? Oh, yeah. Himdians. They're called Himdians. Oh, studs. Shout out to yeah. all the Indian studs out there. Yo, that shout they call in Himdians. Himdians. Don't cancel us. We got that from the kids on TikTok. That's it. The kids on TikTok are calling. They smelling strap ones on TikTok. God yo. damn. <laughs> yo, come on, Charla. 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 Yo, you're not taking a whiff of that Himdian strap? God damn. Yo, yo come damn. on. Damn. Come on. That lambskin fucking strap on? You wouldn't take one. Fire. You wouldn't take one little whiff. Apologize. Apologize for what? Apologize, Alice. And when you do it, do this too. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Apologize. <laughs> Apologize. Wait, 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 it's I'm not sorry. gonna change. <laughs> They're the most valuable sports team. The Dallas Cowboys. It's too late to Jerry apologize. Jerry Jones' NFL team, the Cowboys, is by far the number one with a value of $9 billion, almost $2 billion more than his closest rival, the New York Yankees. All right, I'm wrong. I don't Wait, know. I mean, go, go home. I mean they, 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 <laughs> nah, they are the most expensive losers, though. I'll give you they that. They are, much. man. That's what I'm saying. It's so interesting. Like a team that has not, that has a, what's their record? I think their record is three and five in the playoffs since fucking the last time they won the Super Bowl in 96. Okay, so what happened? So Green Bay. The Green Bay Fudge Packers, man. They packed you up. Packed us the fuck up, got us the fuck out of there. With the youngest wide receiver core in the league and Jordan Love being a rookie quarterback, beat the fuck out of them. Beat, the Cowboys were a number two seed, won the NFC East. Packers were like number seven. So Packers it strapped close. it on. Strapped it on. Strapped it on. And then just... Rammed it right up our asshole. <laughs> Damn. Right up, I mean, right up the goddamn shit. Damn, people. bro. Oh, man. Right up. So here's the thing. Here's, here's, here's the most interesting thing about the Dallas Cowboys, right? Most valuable franchise in sports, $9 billion. Jerry Jones is worth $13.5 billion. So half of his net worth... Is tied up in the Dallas Cowboys. Probably. I mean, he was a billionaire before. That's why he was able to buy him. But why do we as a people believe that there are people out here selling their souls for movies, 
selling their souls for record deals. I like where you going. <laughs> selling their souls to be all types. I successful. like where you going with this. But Jerry Jones, I like what who you has going. all of this money, can't buy success for the Dallas Cowboys. There's nobody to be sacrificed in Dallas. Why doesn't he ever get the Illuminati? Wait, did he not win the championships back in the day? Yes, they won in 92, 94, and 96. So, no. Yeah, 92, 94, and 96 they won. Because they won back to back, and then they won again in 96. Or oh, was it 90? 90, 93, 94, 96? I think it might have been 93, 90. Let me look it up. I'm pretty sure. It doesn't I, matter. Yeah, Point is, matter. he. so he's already won championships. Yes. So he has nothing to prove. Or did he, was he like, was he not the GM when they won the championship? No, he was the owner. But he you know, was the he, owner, he was the G, well, Jerry Jones, uh, Jerry Jones technically had the GM title, but Jimmy Johnson was handling all of the on-field duties. So yeah. it was all Jimmy getting the credit, but who gives a fuck yeah. if you're the owner? And then, you know, they had their little spat and then, you know, Jimmy said he wanted to go coach the fucking Jaguars and Jerry was like... You know, anybody can coach this team. Bought in Barry Schwitzer. Barry Schwitzer came in and won a and ring. He won. he won, but they've been, they hit rock bottom ever since. My whole point is how come people that don't really move the needle in society get Illuminati <laughs> rumors, but Jerry Jones don't? Break it down. I'm trying to figure it out. Wait, why <coughs> Why would he not have Illuminati rumors? Because he, he's not, he don't have no success, even though There's they have three championships. That was in the 90s, though. 29 years? 29 years with, with no rings? I mean, they just tried to put racism on him, and he got out of that pretty quickly. That's, that's you know, Illuminati. That, that's, Illuminati. Don't work. that's Illuminati powers for Man, a white you're, man. You're, a, you're, a bill, you're an 80-something-year-old white billionaire from Arkansas. Why wouldn't you grow up? You grew up in a racist society. Why wouldn't you be racist at some point in your life? Yeah, but it didn't stick. Also, you're paying these black guys millions of dollars. They suck dick every year. Like, <laughs> you don't think that's going to make you a little fucking racist? Like, imagine imagine you paid billions of dollars for a franchise, and then you're paying tens of millions of dollars to these black dudes every single year. They suck. Some of the greatest Dak Prescott. No. <sighs> You get a black dude with two white names, still sucks. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like he's doing everything he can to make the black guys around him tolerable to him, and it just doesn't fucking work. He's had some great, he's had some great talent, man. Even when you had Tony Romo as quarterback. Tony Romo statistically is the greatest Dallas Cowboy quarterback ever. Nothing. Shout out to Tony Nothing. Romo, man. Not an NFC championship game. What's Tony Romo with this team right here? What is he? Yeah. What do you mean? Super Bowl champion? Meaning if Tony Romo was quarterback now. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> I never thought about that. Tony Romo as it yes. They at least get to the NFC championship game. At least. Yes, I do believe that. At least. With that team right there? Come on Yes. Now. Come on Actually, now. Actually, with the team from the last three years. Come on now. What? So Dak is the only issue. No, no, no. He's not the only issue. The, I mean, the, the biggest issue is just a lack of discipline all around. Like, they're just a very undisciplined team. Hmm. And I just think that's a year, that's 29 years of, like, nobody cracking the whip. <laughs> 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 what? <laughs> what? What? You're not going for the low hanging jackfruit today? Charlie, <laughs> <laughs> man, you can't get me to co sign a statement like that. Are you trying to say that Jerry Jones should be cracking the whip on his players a little bit more? A little bit more. Or just somebody. They got to bring in a coach that can do it. Let me Bill understand. Bill Belichick. This. It's a figure of speech, Taylor. What's wrong let with me, you? Let me understand this, Taylor. What Charlamagne was saying is that. <laughs> that that Jerry Jones has people that work for him on a field and that Charlemagne would like that if he cracked the whip on them, that he would get better production for them on the field. Is a that- bit, A little bit more discipline. Is that but more or less, is that what you're trying to say? Yeah. Gotcha. Absolutely, 100%. Bill Belichick, that's what we need. Bill Belichick he will come coming. in there and crack that fucking whip. But Bill Belichick don't want to deal with the- uh, Nah, Jerry got to give up control. Jerry That's 81, you know. Jerry, time is ticking literally and figuratively, all right? That big black motherfucker from the Crossroads video is standing at your door <laughs> with that goddamn you trench coat the on and them shades and that fedora, and he's ready to put his fingers in between your eyes. Now is the fucking 
time. Uh, okay, bring Bill Belichick in. Let him be the GM. Let him be the coach. Let him handle all the on-field issues. Get the fuck out of the way. Because one thing that the Cowboys do do is they draft well. Bill Belichick has, has not historically drafted well. Yo, is Bill Belichick overrated? No. Does Bill Belichick need to win another ring for us to not think he's overrated? Only because Tom Brady won once. So th exactly that's what I'm saying. So what better franchise for him to go to than the Dallas team. Cowboys? Fuck the Falcons, man. You don't waste no time in Atlanta. Atlanta's rebuilding. Like, you go to a team that is ready to go right now, that just needs a little bit more discipline. That's it. And he's going to bring that discipline. He's going to bring the biggest. He got the biggest whip in the league. <laughs> What you talking about, man? Yeah. He yeah. got more rings than the franchise. But he's used to whipping whites. That is another thing. Like whites and Latinos. He's great at whipping whites and Latinos. Like he, on, man. he can really crack that whip on the whites and Latinos and really get them to deliver on the field. Yes. Their production on that field is incredible, but I don't know if he can do it with the blacks. Who is he at? Oh. I mean, he didn't do that great with Hernandez. Hernandez, Crazy. he did amazing. Aaron Hernandez with, was an amazing tight end. And the murder yeah. aside, yeah, I mean that's a big part. That has nothing to do Showed with being that discipline. Showed up to practice. The on field issue. Showed up to uh, practice. He can't ha handle what you do in your own time. That's if right. you want to murder people in your own time, that's fine. If you want to do a drive by at a bar, you know, that's right. Bill always encourages teams to blow off steam. When not <laughs> Does he? That was Aaron's way. Yeah. of blowing off a little steam. Very unproductive mm. way to do things, but that's what he did. And he was a great tight end. And he won Super Bowls, too. <laughs> you just broke the leg, so when you let go of that, it's fuck. <laughs> oh, I thought you were pointing at his boots. When nah, he talking nah. about all his field work, those, <laughs> those are slave boots if I ain't never seen them. Those are God damn. Those are not. What plantation nah. you work on, These? bro? These? shit you... look crazy. <laughs> Them the Frederick Douglass Five. <laughs> what you mean, man? Taylor, let's do some all memes necessary. Come on, what Taylor. Got, what what, what memes got? are going on this week, Taylor? Um, I don't think I really care about. Probably not. Taylor Swift swag surf was disgusting. Come on, stop hating. Nah, bro. man, that shit looks like beards when they don't connect, bro. What's wrong with that? Look at Taylor's. Look at Taylor's swag surf was garbage because they didn't even put their arms around each other. There was no love in it, man. I think you're just jealous that it was the most successful swag surf in history. Nah, it wasn't. There's never been a swag surf that has been bigger than that. Yes, it has. There hasn't. Name one. I don't even think people even knew what it was. See, if she would have took credit for it, and and like. You know how the, the Kardashians would be like, yo, we got cornrows. Yeah. And so everybody like, oh, the Kardashians got cornrows. Yeah. Them announcers didn't know what Taylor Swift was doing. Like Stop. nobody watching the game said, yo, Taylor's leading the swag surf and Chiefs, the, the Chiefs suite right now. Now it wasn't until it hit social that everybody was like, oh, that was the swag now surf. Now they'll know. But now they'll know because Taylor put the swag surf song on the map. Nah. I don't think people knew that song before Taylor. Come on, stop. Just, wow. Come on. Wow. It's a black national anthem. Come on, so. It's one of the, it's, it's literally a Negro spiritual. Like, it's right up there with Nuck If You Buck, uh, Regina Bell, God Is Good. Like, it's one of those. That was pastors I mean, playing at the same it on time, Christmas morning. Say what? Pastors, pastors right. playing it right. on Christmas yeah. morning. Played it on New Year's Eve, it bro. And, it, yeah, I think it is for, it should be for everybody. What are you doing, Taylor? Yeah, and then the thing I didn't like about it was when she pulled her, like, she pulled her scully down like she was really killing it. Yeah, she killed that <laughs> you shit. You know what I'm saying? She did. Look at her. Like, yeah. Like, what is that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. But that's not a surf. She wiping out, bro. Who did it better? Her. <laughs> yeah, that, was, that was bad. Ooh. Nah, Boosie's rough, too. Yeah. Oh man! I think Taylor got boosy. I, with all due respect, I, I think Taylor got boosy. You know, I think with oh, all due respect, damn, what I is think he doing? Taylor got uh, boosy. You know, has he never seen a swish? <laughs> I think he, I might. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go swift with that one. Thank yo. you. The shade room really did us a battle. Thank with you. Crazy. What's the comment saying? I think I gotta go Taylor Swift with this one, man. You're not doing what is Boosie doing? Lauren. Boosie looks like he's actually drowning. <laughs> it says Boosie fight in title league. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, he's fighting against the current. Like, at least Taylor's just rocking in a boat. Like, you know how you're in a boat and the boat's just rocking side to side? Boosie, not surf. You said what? Someone says, surf, Boosie, not 
Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Taylor riding the wave, man. Boosie is like swimming in the current. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go with Taylor. On yeah, it. Taylor's one of the greatest swag surfers in history. Oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> what she is, guys. Taylor, Put some respect. Man. Taylor, what else we got? What memes do we got? It's too hot in here. I'm telling them to turn the heat down. Turn the heat I'm down. I'm telling them yo. to bring in a coffee. Like, like a thing. People just what? Saying swallow. Why they playing with the bishop? Why y'all keep playing with my bishop, man? That's Bishop T.D. Jakes. Swallowed up. Swallowed. Have you ever been swallowed up? Have you ever been swallowed up? Swallowed up. 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 Have you ever been swallowed up? That's fire, yo. Taylor, great find, yo. Taylor, that was fit. What the fuck is he wearing? Yeah. That's called a robe. He's a pastor, you Bro, goddamn he, heathen. He looked like Cersei Lannister. Salute to the bishop, man. What is the context what is, what is he wearing, yo? <laughs> so what the it's fuck is DJ wearing, yo? Swallowed yo, Chris, don't forget who prayed for you, yo. <laughs> Let me you know see what it. Saying? Let me see it. Chris, don't swallowed forget who prayed for you. Have, you, have you ever been swallowed up? <laughs> swallowed up. <laughs> Have you ever been swallowed up? Have you ever been swallowed up? Swallowed up. Have you ever been swallowed up? Swallowed up. Man, we are such an unserious why? people, man. Why are we such a, yo, why is it, we such an unserious yo, why species? Yo, why do you say it like that, yo? I got to know the Ask, context. Yo, can you call him real quick? Yeah, I'm not just calling the bishop. Yo, call, call the good Salute man. Salute to the goat, man. Bishop T.D. Jakes. Have you ever been swallowed? swallowed? Have you ever been swallowed? Have you ever been swallowed up? <laughs> swallowed up. Have you ever? God. That's fire. Though. Yo, Imagine girls got to send that shit to you. Yeah. Yo, girls, oh, girls got to meme that and then get that in the DMs, yo. Get That's that in the fire. DMs. Have you ever been That's swallowed? Fire. Taylor, say that to your boo today. See what he say. Yo, send that to your man. What else we got, Taylor? What we got, man? We're going to run through these memes, man. What is that, Boosie ain't what? Boosie just talking about how he wouldn't do no gay shit. No whole shit. Huh? They asked if he would get his nipples pierced. I don't do shit that women do. You ain't gonna never catch Boosie doing no whole shit. I'm a man. I let women get all they pride. You'll never catch me doing nothing no woman do. That's not true. <laughs> he doing... That's the whole... Ironing. Men do a lot of things. I'm doing, doing listen, one. He's literally doing laundry and ironing. I don't get he got it, two earrings in his ear. Okay, that's one thing. And I know he eats pussy. And he sucks titties. He's doing house chores, bro. Taylor, you was just talking about how you a pillow princess. Oh. You was just talking about how you a pillow princess. I'm a girl. Okay. What does that mean? So that means gr you girls do things, guys do things that girls do. Yo, when a girl goes down on you, how do you, you said, put your talking, legs? She said a, a pillow princess is a girl who gets eaten out. Yeah. But doesn't want to do anything in return. Yeah. So you just, you're like this? Is that what you do? Do you do one leg up? <laughs> By the way, that's most men dream. <laughs> Hell yeah. Swallow me up. And then I don't do nothing in return. Swallowed up. <laughs> like, Have you ever been you know, swallowed up? Swallow me up and I don't got to do swallowed. nothing in return. Swallowed Come on, man. But what is... You, you know, look wild, Chris. I know. Chris I'm <laughs> let me, let me, I'm chilling. He yeah, just had his belly out. My belly's <laughs> out. I'm just trying to get <laughs> swallowed, to get swallowed up. up. I'm just trying to get swallowed <laughs> up. Swallowed up yeah. position. Oh, God. But Taylor, how do you, what position, are, or do you go like this? Do you like, you like that and then get it eaten from underneath? What is your position to get it it's eaten? It's literally only happened one time. And? You're a liar. It did. You're a liar. Wait a minute, you lying? <laughs> Big line. No, it only happened one time and I was in Aruba. That's it. Come on, I yo, it was stop Miami. lying. No. Stop lying. Tried yo. it. No. <laughs> stop lying, yo. But wait, um, what, so what were your legs? You went doggy? <laughs> you no. went doggy? <laughs> My legs were <laughs> on her <laughs> shoulder. Oh, you went. God damn. <laughs> See, that's what I'm saying. Boosie says I'm not going to do shit women do. Women doing shit that we doing. Yes. What are you talking about? She threw your shit up on her shoulder? You just going to let her throw your legs on your shoulders? God like damn. I said her shoulder. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Still, you threw them on her shoulder? 
I'm still laying down. Did she grab your legs at the end, put them up, and wipe you afterwards? <laughs> wipe me down. No, I, <laughs> no, I told you. Ah! <laughs> I left because I was uncomfortable. What do you mean? Why? Why are you uncomfortable? Legs too high? Your hamstrings tight? It was like a whole thing that happened in the room. You are like, changing this story. Yeah, this I know. What That's what I'm saying. This is so, not, you, you see how it happens? I didn't you see how it happens? The whole thing. Yes, you did. Nah, before did I? you were like, I got my pussy aid. It was great. Yeah, Y'all a girl like a, and got my friend. And my friend brought, my friend porno brought star. this couple home. And we wanted to just, me and my friends wanted to watch. One of the girls was like, oh, I want to eat you out. And I was like, fuck it. That's what happened. And I left because it got too weird. What was weird about it? I was high. Like, I just, <laughs> it was just too, Yo, this, uh, like, too much. See how it starts? It starts with some fun little shit that uh, you She wasn't it, good, though. I told you she wasn't good at but it. But it was your idea to bring her back. Now you no, felt uncomfortable. <laughs> I was under the influence of drugs. That wasn't my idea. You see how it, you see how it happens? How she told this story before. Before, she was like, I'd let her do it till completion. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm busting on her head. Not my business. Not you said I'm busting on her head. Not my business. That's not what not I said. My business. Headshot dead. That's what you said. You said you busted right on her fucking skull. What else we got? <laughs> okay. Um, I don't. I mean, this could go into. Well, I'm gonna say that for later then. What? Because it has to do with NBA. We so running through your shit, yo. I know. Yo, but, can we talk about NBA YoungBoy? Yeah, can we talk can we, about the after, song, bro? After, after this, and then we could go to it because something else that goes to it. Why the daddy side of the family is the fun side. Do you side. agree or disagree? I mean, no, not necessarily. Charlotte. In my family? <laughs> I feel like in the black family, the dad's side my dad, is. Yeah, funny. my dad and his and my daddy and his cousins and his uncles, that's where I got all my entertainment growing up. Really? The best. <laughs> the best. Like, I mean, the way they used to use the gay slur, I mean, even though they can't, it's not politically correct. But they were throwing it out there. Oh my God. Watching Three's Company with my dad and his <laughs> first cousins, my cousin railed him, incredible. Why? When what I think about do? it now, I didn't know what was really going on back then, yeah. but when I think about it now, some of the best comedy I've ever seen in my What'd life. What'd they do? Nothing I can repeat, but <laughs> trust and believe, they thought he was a gay slur because for whatever reason, it was kind of like watching Roadrunner and Wile E. Coyote, because you know how you're, you want Wile E. Coyote to catch the Roadrunner for whatever reason. They expected Jack Tripper to get some pussy every and he would week. Never get I don't it. know why they thought that. And <laughs> I remember when um I remember when dude died vividly. And that news came across the TV. And all I heard was, ah, I'm glad that punk dead. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Lived with them women all them goddamn years and they ain't getting no pussy. Not one time, ain't fuck nothing. I never forget that. I'm like. It was a TV show. I'm now that I'm thinking about it. I'm like, it was a TV show. Why was they that passionate over a TV show? Come on, your dad believes, bro. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He absolutely believes. But yeah, my daddy's side of the family. Alex, say for you. Kidfield, South Carolina. My mom's side. Not even close. Your mom's side's funnier? Yeah. She's Puerto Rican. Yeah, my mom's mom's side's funnier too. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I mean, the poorer side is the funnier. That's a fact. Yeah. It's always because all true. they got is humor. That's yeah. it. Yeah. That's it. They got to entertain themselves, and that was the era before <laughs> anything. There was no phones, no nothing. So mm-hmm. everybody had to talk. There was never a lull in the conversation. The only time there was a lull in the conversation when everybody was too drunk or too high. Mm-hmm. Other than that, we're cooking. Oh my god! Non-stop. Oh, non fucking stop. Like I have a story that my dad's cousin Rel tells about a time. He thought a lion was in his yard and monks going to stop him. So it, it runs in it, your family. It runs in the family. Yeah. Just go sit yeah. no, his, But he had every reason to think there was a lion in his yard. Okay. I'm sure he did. He drove, no, he, he, yeah. he, 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 it was late at night. He, he drives into his yard. He sees a lion in the middle of his yard. So he turns the car off, turns the lights off, and he's sitting there just looking. And he says, he says to himself, there's a lion <laughs> laying in my yard. So he said he flashed the lights, thinking the lion's going to get up and walk away. He said the lion does not move. So he says he turns the car on, hits the gas. He <laughs> said the lion still does not move. So he creeps up a little bit with the car just to get a little closer. He said the lion still doesn't move. He goes, hmm. So he gets out of the truck, 
And he says he creeps up on the lion and he goes, rah! And he runs back into the truck. <laughs> right? The lion still don't move. He creeps back to the lion again. Rah! He runs back to the truck. The lion still don't move. He goes, shit, the lion's asleep. Maybe I can make it to the house. <laughs> so he gets out the truck, <laughs> runs to the house, falls, <laughs> falls in like a mud puddle or something, thinks the lion hears him and wakes up, rushes to the door, beats on the door, gets in the house. His wife was like, what the fuck is wrong with you? And he goes, there's a lion. Get my gun. There's a lion in the goddamn yard. So she looks at him. She goes, I bought that from the pottery store. It was like a, one of those, <laughs> one, of those, one, of those one of those lions. Clearly. One of those lion statues. So Ralph goes, well, bring my gun anyway so I can kill myself because I got to be the dumbest motherfucking folks. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what I grew up around. You know what I'm saying? I grew up around that kind of humor, bro. So, yes, definitely my daddy's side of the family. Now, can we talk about NBA Youngboy, Taylor? Yeah, tell me what... So, what's the deal with NBA Youngboy? Break it down for me. He has to live in Utah. He's on house arrest. I think but, but is he... He's not from Utah originally. Where is he from? Louisiana. Yeah. So, why is he not on house arrest in Louisiana? Do you get to probably choose which get, house you're under arrest yeah, in? Probably because he'll get into a lot of trouble. He's a celebrity. It's actually smart. Well, no, no. I, I'm just saying legally, why are you allowed to just go to... And also, is there an amount of acres that constitutes as house arrest? For example, let's say you live on a house that has a thousand acres. Is that still house arrest? Technically, I mean, yeah. it's your you house. own it. Because, yeah. yeah. you know what I mean? Like It's your house. You, you, you can't, they can't tell you what kind of house to live in. I mean, even if you live on a hundred acres... You know, you still want to be able to come and go as you please. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I, I've never heard of an NBA Young Boy show. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure he would like to go out there and perform. The guy had, what, six number one albums? You know, it's nothing like, you know, it's nothing like going out to touch the people. You Facts. know what I'm saying? But, yeah, he's on house arrest. He's got 11 kids. What, nine baby moms? Mm -hmm. And um, he he was sitting down with my guy, Boule Kev. Shout out to Boule Kev, Shout to the good brother, Boule Kev. And he, um... Just play it, Taylor. You do have a lot of children. And, and, uh, uh, you know, obviously, you do have a lot of children. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, I've been around you to see in a short amount of time that you're a great father. How important is fatherhood to you, man? Um, I'm not really big on it, to be honest. What do you mean by that? You're not big on it? Yeah. Like you're, in a, you're, I mean, you're a family man. I'm here with you. I see it. Yeah, but I'm only out. I'm only like in here because you live. Oh, well, I don't believe See, it's you. a crazy topic because I'm not the type like the sugar coat nigga. But I'm four walls all day, every day. When you say four walls, you mean locked in? Yeah. Just honed in on the music, mm -hmm. recording. Yeah. You can take the hat. I don't mind. We burn. We burn a lot, but mostly. Literally inside. Working. No. Yeah, I don't even know what you mean. I'm just so you got 11 kids. You I'm just sitting there all day. You're not big on fatherhood, bro. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You're, I mean, you, you're big on fucking. You're definitely big on fucking. I, I just, you know, what child do you get to that you, you realize, I'm not really big on this. <laughs> like, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Is it after two? Is it after four? Or like, you, you, you know, you got the 11, but yeah, I gave him donkey any day for that. I, I mean, he always just seems so unbelievably high every time I see him in anything. Really? You don't think that? I don't think he could smoke on probation. Uh, yeah, I thought that. You know, when I saw the when I saw the interview he did with Million Dollars Worth of Game, I thought that. Um, but yeah, he's on probation. You're on probation at house arrest. Like he can't he can't be high. He's definitely smoking. I mean, nah. Even in that video, hold on. Isn't you're on smoking? probation at house arrest like that. I don't think he's playing with them drugs yeah. like y'all think he is. I really don't. He just so if he's not, he's just pretending to be high. I don't know. If, I just think that's his draw. The way he uh, talks, he looks, it's like he that looks, Louisiana he draw. Looks out of it, like he, yeah, he looks out of it. He looks I mean, exhausted. He's, like, he's very on top of not wanting to go back to jail because, like, Thank I you. heard all of his interviews that he does. He needs to approve it, so mm -hmm. nothing goes out that can get him in trouble and sent back to jail. But that's yeah. not him. That's his. No, like that's he's his he's really adamant about it. Like, he gets mad at people. He's like, yo, I didn't approve this clip. Yeah, that's the stuff I don't, I get it. But, you know, it's just like, yo, don't put yourself in that position then. Like, you know, if you don't feel like doing the interview that day, don't do the interview that yo, day. Yo, 
I mean, not to be conspiracy theorist here, but like, do you think that like his his uh, record label loves this setup? It's like the perfect re- setup for a record label. Hey, here's this guy who's dangerous rapper. If he's out in the streets, he might get shot or he might go to jail. Let's put him in a place where he literally cannot leave and just produces music. That's the only thing he can do all day is make music. He's like a dairy cow for the record label. He's, and they're just he, milking yeah, him with yeah, albums. Yeah, I can see that. Milking him with albums. It's like, this is, if you're a record exec, you're like, oh my God, we got a house arrest? We're going to squeeze so much money out of this kid. Very unique artist though. Because there's not too many people who put out as much music as NBA Youngboy does. Mm. And he's been doing this. Like, this isn't something new. Like, he's been putting out albums on top of albums forever. Mm. You know, because he was, this is his second record label. He was on Atlantic before. Now he's on Capitol. And he's just so prolific that he can, he can do it. I don't, I mean, I don't, I don't listen to a lot of NBA Youngboy. That's the thing. It's like, I know of him. From just kind of internet culture, but I don't know any of his songs. He like he had this one song with the Migos I used to really fuck with. I can't remember the name of it. Do you remember that record? No. Yeah, but I mean he's like the he's like these kids love him. He's only twenty four. I know, and I heard. I listen. I've heard all about him. There's no question. But like I don't know a banger that I could be like, oh yeah, that NBA young boy song. But it's if he if he's it. in a three sixty, wouldn't the labels hate this because now he can't make any money on the road? That's if he's in the three sixty, and if. Um, they care about the road. But I wonder if the labels are, I wonder if the labels are just like, if he's on the road, we have to worry about him getting killed. I mean, or yeah. doing some fuck shit with, gun. like he just got a gun charge, right? So it's like, that's why he's locked up. So it's like, he's going to break the law most likely. And if he does, he gets put in jail. This is better than jail because if he's in jail, he can't make us money. But if he's not in jail, he's on house arrest, then you can make all the money in the world. Like, mm. I think that there are execs that are salivating over this situation. I mean, house arrest probably is the best thing for him, <clears throat> you know? Because who knows what could have happened over the last few years? You know what I mean? Yeah. Sometimes you got to just sit there until you turn 25 when your prefrontal cortex develops fully, you know what I mean? And you're able to make more rational decisions. I mean, I'm not going to... I mean... You think it's that he's not 25 is the reason why he's... I mean, it's just, it's just a scientific fact. Your prefrontal cortex don't develop till you're 25. I mean, it's developed enough for most people to not... Is it? Yeah. I mean, when you think of him, right? So you think the only reason why he's lived this life is because he doesn't have a prefrontal cortex that's developed? Why did Alex not do that? Alex who? Media. Did you know Alex when he was under 25? He was a police officer. Some of the craziest people you ever want to meet. <laughs> that is true, actually. <laughs> that is kind some of Some of the craziest <laughs> motherfuckers you ever want to meet are police officers. That's facts. Shout out you know to I mean? Shout out to NYPD. And yo. then when I think of that, when I think of like, I think of like Ja Morant and the decisions he's made. Stop I think it. of Zion Williamson and the decisions he's Stop made. It. I'm just saying, there's something to it. Stop it. I'm just saying. I mean, that, that, by the way, NBA Young Boy is the reason Ja Morant had the uh the nickname NBA Dumb Boy. NBA Gun Boy. Dumb Boy. Dumb Boy. Yeah, they was, they, it was NBA Young Boy, but they was calling Ja NBA Dumb Boy. Are there any good bars about you? Like, is there is there a line where you're like, ooh, that was pretty good? I didn't listen to the whole thing. You completely understand, though. Played it, I, 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 I only think he mentions me in the beginning, though. No, he says... Let me hear it in the beginning. Well, maybe I can tell you. <laughs> Hey, 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 hey. The most impressive thing about this video is that he has a real live donkey in the video. That is so smart Mm. because that's tax deductible. If you have livestock on your property, whether it's like cows, pigs, chickens, I'm sure donkeys fall into that category, Mm -hmm. it's tax deductible. And the food for the livestock is tax deductible. Oh, really? So Hell yeah. So if he got all of them acres of land in Utah and he got real livestock like donkeys on his his shit, fantastic. So you like it? You're into it? I fuck with it. (laughs) Listen, I inspire art, guys. (laughs) I don't know if y'all know. Like, like I have inspired art for a long time. I don't know if y'all. Who do you think has the best bar on you? Bar on me or about me? Both. About me is Drake, and it's not even close. Which one? The, Five sending shots. bottles for Charlemagne. That shit. I I'm in Zanzibar, and people are sending me bottles of wine because of that. I'm literally New Year's Eve last this year. 
I was, y'all knew I was a dance bar. Sending me bottle up at the buzzer did that. I'm gonna did the bottle to dollar man. They look at it. The bottle of dollar man. I'm serious. I'm serious. I'm serious. I'm that like literally, it's like definitely that. Um about me, the best diss? Who had the best diss? I don't know. I don't even remember most of them at this point. <laughs> there was some good. I mean, there's it's been a lot of good ones. I don't remember who. I don't remember. Sounds like Drake. Drake had the best one about me. Drake might have had a, the best diss too, though. Now that I think about what it, what he said. He said, uh, "Like Charlemagne, you see the lighter and the darker patches." <laughs> 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 that was a good one. That was, really that was good. a good one. That was a good one. Yo, do you think Drake is uh, is hip hop or pop? Drake is absolutely hip hop, bro. He's all, he's pop too, though. Why would Mos Def say that? Well, he got asked that. Like, like, let, we, like, let's not act like he just volunteered that. God damn, there's a ten times rappers diss Charlemagne the Godless. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. God damn, yo. Taylor just pulled that up. You loved Charlotte. Kanye, Kanye never dissed me in a song. I think maybe... I think this is just in general. In general, yeah. Oh, that's when he told me to shut the fuck up on stage. Nipsey Hussle dissed you? Yeah, but that was out of... That, that was wrong. Me and Nipsey always been 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 super cool. I, that was actually my fault. That was my fault. I was being, I was, I was being funny and I forgot something. Because uh, they say your name in there. I remember that. Yeah, Migos. Charlamagne say the game donkey the other day. Buster Rhymes was never in a lyric. That was just face-to-face -face confrontation. <laughs> Uh, Amon Shumpert. Shumpert. Amon Shumpert's a rapper? Yeah. Yeah. What did I say about Amon Shumpert? Amon is definitely. What Tell Charlemagne when he see me, better holler at me, hater. Mm, fire. <laughs> Never heard that song. I don't remember that one. Maybe I do, <laughs> I forgot. Is this it right No, I no, don't, right don't need to hear that. Who's Amon Shumpert? <laughs> Yellow Wolf. Yeah, I used to give Yellow Wolf hell. He wow. said, what did he say about me? Like, like Charlemagne, God, God, God hates me. Man, wish I felt accomplished by having such a prestigious, overachieving genius like Charlemagne to complain about me. Why can't somebody who's really done something doubt me? Wow. <laughs> I like overachieving genius. I think that, that's riff raff. <laughs> Damn, what riff raff say? Yeah, he was kind of hard on the white rappers. You see the guy oh, riff yeah. raff? <laughs> He's kind of hard on the white rappers. I said, see, the Riff Raff was Katy Perry's date to the VMAs last night. I will never, ever tell myself what I can't do. That's not a diss. Sounds like you. That's not a diss. But it sounds like. How was that a diss? That's something you said. I did say that, but how was that a diss? All Riff Raff says, you can't be me. Fredro Star. This must be an old list. Yeah. Fredro, yes. That, was, that wasn't a rap record. Trinidad James. I don't remember none of these shit, yo. Jaheen. Charlemagne was pretty brutal in his takedown of the all go to everything rapper's career. And look at my face in that video, yo. <laughs> God, that's why Drake said he see the darker and the lighter patches. Yo. Yeah, wow, that's crazy. That's wild. <laughs> that's wild. Listen, Drake is hip hop, bro. Little twist. <laughs> What the yeah. fuck is going on? Not a little How twist, long is this list, bro? yo? What the fuck, How long man? is this list, yo? <laughs> what the fuck? This is old. This got to be an old list. <laughs> Listen, Drake is hip hop, but Drake is act also everything else. Why would Why would most even suggest that? Why wouldn't he just say exactly what you just said? Because, and he also took some shots. He was like, it's like shopping music. Like, fantastic. Fantastic bar. Stop hey. Oh, yeah, it was fair. When he said that, when he was like, it's like shopping, something to shop to. Yeah. Aggressive shopping. Yeah, aggressive that shopping. That was hilarious. That was bro. Funny. That was funny. But why is he taking shots at Drake, though? That's what I I'm trying to say. I think he was asked a question and he Man, answered come it. Come on, bro. Stop you know? it. Stop I, it. I, you don't I, think he feels that? He might feel it, but like you, you still go. you still uh let's hear what he said. Let's hear what he like, said. Like, why even thinking about Drake in that way? They then? asked him. Okay. Watch. Drake is pop to me. In the sense, like, if I was in Target in Houston and I heard a Drake song, it feels like a lot of his music is compatible with shopping. Hilarious. <laughs> Hilarious. Commercial music. 
Or as, or as you know, music. shopping with an edge in certain instances. That's hilarious. Fair. I like Drake's music, but I understand exactly what you're saying. Of course. I mean, I It's, g- I, it's I get commercial, it. entertaining, fun, it's, good, it's, formulaic music. It's likable. Likable music, yeah. It's likable. Um, but is it... <laughs> you know, I'm going to leave you alone. We're going to move. We're going to move on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like is Drake hip hop become so pretentious? Like that shit is annoying. Nah, that's, that, listen, that's most that's most hip hop heads. Yeah, but most of those most of those like pure hip hop heads, they would just want the bars. Like most of them are pretentious, bro. Yeah, but he, when did he start talking like that? He been doing that for a while. Like yeah, I've never known him Stop not to it. talk like that. Where's the two words most deaf? Where's the Ruckus Records most deaf? That's always been him. No, the Ruckus Records most deaf was not like Shopable. <laughs> he was. <laughs> he was. <laughs> like, yo, he, he, like, that's why I love his yeah, role. He's like a in, uh, gay professor talking. I like. love his role in Brown Sugar. You ever seen Brown yes. Sugar? <laughs> he, that's him. In Brown Sugar, he plays the <laughs> biggest, most hip-hop pretentious rapper who won't even sign to a record label because they got the hip-hop Dalmatians. He's not even yeah. re- remotely trying to do no commercial shit, you know? Most Def is nice as hell at rapping, bro. Very nice, but guess who else is nice? Drake. Aubrey fucking... So, the, no, no, no. Is Mo, it all Mo, the old rappers don't like Drake, it seems? No, it's not that. It's that, at least in my opinion, I don't know what Most Def's motivation is, but... To me, I think that there's always, and these guys are competitive people. They've dedicated their life to a craft, and there's going to be envy for the people who are on top. And the price of being on top is the hate that comes with it, the resentment that comes with it. And like even calling him not hip hop, like nobody would say most deaf is not hip hop. Everybody be like, oh shit, most deaf is hip hop. So he's essentially carved out like a WNBA within the rap umbrella, where like only the people, where he's going to get to be the top of. He's going to get to be the MVP in the WNBA. Well, Drake, Drake isn't hip-hop. He might rap, but he's not hip-hop. And I'm I'm the MVP of the WNBA. But <laughs> I don't like the WNBA reference, but I get what you're saying. You're basically saying he carved out his own subgenre. Yeah, which, yeah, which, yeah, 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 which yeah. he can exclude the number one dude from. And well, they're always going to do that to Drake for a number of reasons. Because they can't compete with him. Well, also, <laughs> if you could compete with him, you wouldn't. Also because of the whole ghostwriting thing. Mm-hmm. That's really what I think a lot of it is. I think the whole ghostwriting thing and people saying it's it's like if you found out a comic wasn't writing his own shit. Fair, but at the same time, it's like I can't fathom that he can't write his own shit. I cannot fathom. I agree with you. Listen, I totally disagree I can, with I can't. most stuff. I because here's the thing: if Drake isn't hip hop, then Kanye isn't hip hop. Andre 3000 isn't hip hop. Lauren Hill isn't hip hop because mm. all of these people have given you a whole lot of rap, right? Andre's given you a whole lot of rap, but then Andre decided to go experiment with other things. He decided to give you what he gave you on Love uh, Speaker Box, The Love Below. He decided to give you a flute album. Kanye West has given you 808 and Heartbreaks. Like, you know, Lauryn Hill has always experimented with R&B and rap. Like, if Drake isn't hip hop because he chooses to flirt with other genres, then there's so many artists who aren't hip-hop. Well, I don't think that's why he's saying it's not hip-hop. I think he's saying it's not hip-hop is because he's commercial and he is shopping. But who isn't commercial? Hip-hop has been commercial since the late 90s. I think the guys that aren't selling create the subgenre so that they can have validation within their subgenre. So they're like, yeah, I'm not selling, but the reason I'm not selling is because I'm hip-hop. When in the reality, like you just said, there are people who are hip hop and they also sell. Sell, yeah. So I, I just think it's a justification that a lot of artists, you know, create for themselves. And that's just not just Moses, a lot of different guys. I think, and I get Moses' frustration because every single person that he meets goes, Most, you are the best rapper ever. Most, oh my God, Miss Fat Booty was the craziest song. Most, you are two words. Like everything that you've done is incredible. So he's walking around like, I am incredible. I'm the best. Why am I not selling like the best? Oh, it must be that he does a form of music that is more digestible and shittier and the masses can consume it, whereas I have high art and high art can only be consumed by people who have tastes. Well, that's why, you know, Glass Salute the Glasses Malone, you know, Glass Malone is the host of the No Ceilings podcast on the Black Effect iHeart Radio Podcast Network. What most said, Glasses has always said, Glasses always compares Drake music to uh, Walmart. 
are McDonald's. He That's said hate. he said it's ma- <laughs> <That's> <laughs> He hate. said it's mass consumption that so many people but that's hate. Indulging. And with all due respect to Glasses, he's also a rapper who doesn't sell as many records as Drake. And so well, you would say the same him. thing. Let's call him. Let's give him a call. Holler <laughs> let's give Let's give Glasses a call. Let's call I'm him. I'm just saying that's what I've seen this happen so often with like all different genres of art. Yeah, I don't want to speak like, for, I don't want to speak for Glasses. But I guess what I would say is that I don't like the, the subgenres and maybe most would, maybe most would like belittle his own work because there have been songs that he's done that have been incredibly popular they could be played at walmart or target whatever the hell you could shop to it like there's been numerous times where i heard miss fat booty while i'm out i'm not it's not just in a club or just in my car or whatever it is so he has produced the massive success hits maybe he would look at those and be like ah they're too corporate i'm not into it and that's his uh, you know he has his own artistic vision he can do whatever he wants but he is capable of being part of those what Drake does is he produces those at a much higher clip than any other artist, and that's why he's the number one guy. Yeah, I wish that the person who was interviewing most would have said, but there's been a lot of different rap artists who have been pop. Because what most said is very, it's a very, it's a big distinction, right? He didn't say Drake makes pop music. He said, I think Drake is pop. Then he started talking about Drake's music. Now, pop just means it's short for popular. So there's plenty of you turn on Z100 right now. Um. If you turn on Z100 right now, you're going to hear mad hip hop records. Yeah, because, because hip hop is the music most popular now. Yeah. genre. Now, there is also a pop sound. We know the pop sound. It's the Instinct, the Backstreet Boys, the yeah. One Direction, which slaps, by the way. Fucking best song ever. One of my favorite songs ever, literally. It's literally the best song ever. But if you listen. One Direction? One Direction. I Fantastic. love them. Maybe it's the way she walks. Oh, fire. But uh, Drake don't make that kind of music. So. To say Drake is a pop artist, you got to take away all his rap. Drake can literally go on stage, don't do none of his singing songs, and can rap for two hours. Drake. Yeah, that's the thing. That's like, hip hop. Mm-hmm. How is he not hip hop? Oh, here go G right here. G. G, what's the deal? We sitting here on Brilliant Idiots, me and Andrew Schultz, and he said you and most deaf hating on Drake. I don't know why is that the first thing. Like, Drew knows me, so that's crazy. He would think I'm hating. Yeah, he said hating. That's hate. word, hating? Yep, he said you hating on why Drake. Why am I hating on Drake, Drew? Uh, well, I guess it depends on if you think music for Walmart is um, derogative. Is that a compliment when you say that, or is that a criticism? It's not any. It's it's just a it's just a term of pop music, right? It's like it's like Madonna. Like you don't dislike Madonna. It's just Madonna. It's pop music. It's hard to. It's oh, so then I think you and I think you and most are saying different things. No, he's saying the same thing too. He's like it's the music you hear when you shop. Yeah, but I think he's using that, and I guess we should just ask him, but it feels as if he's using that, and I'm judging off of tone. It feels like he's using that as a criticism, where you are saying that because of his pop, because of Drake's popularity, his music is played at all these establishments, but not no. because of the sound. No, it's created, it's created to be played at Target and Walmart. Oh, I don't believe that. I don't believe so, that at all. So if it's like a next episode or a gin and juice, which has become massive popular crossover records performed at the Super Bowl, they weren't made to be that. Exactly. I don't believe that his is made to be that. Culture and experience. Drake music is... I, I just had this conversation, right? I just had this conversation. Kentucky Fried Chicken, right, sells fried chicken greens. That is soul food, Right. That don't mean Kentucky Fried Chicken sells soul food. Taco Bell has his take on Mexican food, but they don't make Mexican food. Yeah, they do. No, 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 they don't. They make an Americanized version of a Mexican cuisine. That's a pop version. They take flavors, seasoning, different things out so America can digest it. That's what Drake's music is. All of these things are pulled out so America can digest it. He's brilliant. I think that's what he's saying. It's made for everybody else to enjoy. 
<laughs> he makes so, music for the masses, but I mean, but that's what everybody does. So, so yeah, yeah. So what's the difference? But no, no, no. Everybody doesn't do that, Drew. You, you don't think that? Kanye did that at one point? I keep saying this. Remember, we had this conversation, and I was like, I've been thinking about where does he stand. I see Kanye as Michael Jackson, and Drake as Madonna. <laughs> nah, Michael made yeah, soul yeah, music. Oh, uh, gee. <laughs> Off the Wall is a soul album, bro. No, no, the Jackson, that's a disco album. The Jackson 5 made soul music. Off what about... Off the Wall is a disco album. Disco's black music, though. That's still black cultural soul music. I'm not, I'm not knocking it. I'm just telling you his origins were from R&D music, which was the Jackson 5. And I think Kanye does the exact same thing. He takes urban ideas, right? And then he, he shovels them into where you can get Thriller and Off the Wall, right? He's fantastic at it, right? If you listen to... Thriller, right? Thriller is just uh, Rick James, give it to me, baby, or 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 Billy Jean is just Hall of Notes. I can't go for that, or you know, uh, uh, Beat It is My Sharona by the Nats. So or, don't stop till you get enough. Is Marvin Gaye got to give it up? Like there are obvious things that he's doing to create a version of pop music from an urban, you know, take. So Drake is different. So Drake here's the thing: makes, you're Drake saying Kentucky Fried Chicken and Taco Bell. So, so you're saying, and correct me if I'm wrong here, you're saying that it is his intention to water down and manipulate these other genres to make it more digestible for the masses. That's yes, not, not manipulate. That's what being a great pop producer is. Max Martin, right? They well, no, you, you that. compared it to KFC and you compared it to Taco Bell. They are yes. they are influenced by a certain type of food, but capitalism has forced them to try to sell as many tacos as they can or as many biscuits as they can. And because of that, they're making it digestible to as many possible people as they can. Chinese food in America is different than Chinese food in China, yada, yada, yada. What I would argue is this is the type of music he just wants to make. He's not going how can I make it most digestible to everybody, but rather, this is the stuff, this is my artistic reflection. This is the only music he can make. Well, then, if it's authentic to him, he's not watering anything down, and... No, no, but this is my point. It, he's the all... Of, as a Canadian person, he's the his take is the all-American experience. That's why it's referenced as pop music, right? It's, it's, it's not about, like, Taco Bell was never a Mexican food. It was a, it was a taco place started in Southern California by this white man who liked, who wanted to make Mexican food for white people. Uh, the, 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 what, what I'll push back and say, G, is I feel like Drake's best, at least to me, his best work is when he's rapping about his experiences in Canada. Agree, but they're pop experiences. Not the, I mean, not to me. Not when he's talking about trying to be on the come. When he's talking about being on the come up, trying to make it as a rapper, yada yada yada. Like I, I like when he raps about what he's going through in Canada. That sounds very organic to me. I don't think there's nothing to like or dislike about it. It's it's always fantastic. He's a fantastic artist. Do you think he's hip hop? No, he's not. It's obvious he's not. So if a guy can get on stage and rap two hours of music, he's not hip hop. No, just because you use rap music does not make you hip hop. Hip rap music is at this point is going to be used by everybody. Post Malone used it to get in. Rap music has the least barriers of entry. Hip hop in general, you can match yourself as a hip hop artist easy. Drake does it very well, though. So geez. what's so what's hip hop? Post Malone came through the door calling himself White Allen Iverson with braids to the back. Got in the door and said, "I am not that." Right, because he could go and be a white person. That's true. So, look so at what's hip hop? Look at all of that. Show said, "What's hip hop?" Street urban culture, street urban culture personified through the arts. So Kanye's not hip hop. His most hip hop. Well, that's the problem, right? I've been having this conversation for a while. Of course, he's his sound. He's close enough, right? Because there are exceptions to the rules, but the rules. So there are. You know, kids that grew up in suburban areas that still had street urban culture. Ask so most. Ask most of us. Ask him if most is hip hop. You think most deaf is hip hop? Hell, fucking yeah. Is he street urban culture personified? Yes, he is densely populated. The slang he uses, the way he walks, the way he talks is street urban. 
Not Disney recently, the way he talks. <laughs> not in suburban, middle-class Canada. That's completely far away from street urban lifestyle. You told me you don't like no hip-hop unless somebody get killed on the album. I've never said that in life. That's <laughs> <laughs> just ridiculous. I love Try. It's just crazy. <laughs> so so you can't be hip hop unless you so you can't be hip hop unless you're from America and you're from the hood essentially street urban culture it don't, it don't matter if it's, I, I won't even say America it's not just street urban it's street urban culture it has to be crime written Disney manipulated community the culture created there G told me that he needs a drive by every 16 bars and he needs at least six women getting called a bitch in two songs for him to appreciate it. That is, that is ridiculous. Bye, glasses. <laughs> Bye, glasses. And Thank you. was my favorite group as a kid. Who? I saw the movie. This, I have Disorderlies on DVD right now. You said the Fat Boys? The Fat Boys. The Fat Boys pushed a very violent lifestyle on the people, man. Yo, they did. It's not you. You can't say they're pushing a lifestyle because people aren't talking about their experiences. Yeah, but they, it was pushing unhealthy lifestyle. Yeah, it was very unhealthy lifestyle. I love the fat boys. Very unhealthy lifestyle. Listen, it was a different day then, and we understood that's what they was going through. Y'all would y'all would say the fat boys are not hip hop right now. Y'all would say the fat boys aren't hip hop. Of course they are. I believe they are. I believe Drake is hip hop too, though. No, no, he's not. He's a pop artist that uses rap sometimes as a delivery. Damn. I'm I'm I'm, I'm gonna hit your line. My man. Right. That was Glasses Malone, the host of the No Ceilings podcast, y'all, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I don't know, man. I think Drake is hip hop. I think Andre 3000 is hip hop. I think Kanye is hip hop. I get what G's saying, but I think these people rap way too good to not be considered hip hop, yo. Because like, you're looking like, it off of like the skill of rap. He has prerequisites for he has prerequisites for hip hop that are outside of Drake's control. Yeah. Whereas you're treating it based on if someone is rapping or they're not rapping. As simple as that. And then maybe me. maybe most has a similar similar prerequisites or different prerequisites that like, for example, Drake just doesn't fit in. Maybe Drake is or maybe most is as simple as like, yo, if if your album is going number one, it can't be nuanced and niche enough to be real hip hop. It has to be pop, and maybe he doesn't like that. And that's why I think we put ourselves in boxes, right? Because to me, when I look at Drake, when I look at Andre 3000, I look at Kanye West, all I see is three of the greatest artists that ever existed, period. Forget the genre. Like, they're just three of the greatest. Who? Kanye, Andre, Drake. Yep. This Drake hasn't taken the same chances. Let me see. I mean, what'd you say? Yes, he What'd has. you say, Chris? I don't think Drake has taken the same chances. I mean, Bro, I he's taken singing. more. No, I, I don't mean in terms of the format. I mean in terms of he's in the most macho, the masculine. I think he is. He's incredibly, uh, yeah. I, he's vulnerable. But so what else you want? Big. More than that. I mean, I think that those guys are much more nuanced artists for sure. I. Eh, are they? I mean, uh, Drake is taking some real chances, man. Like, I mean, there's a lot of things that Drake has done. Miss Fat Booty? <laughs> Miss Fat Booty was fire. One of my favorite songs. I could rap it bar for bar. I wouldn't say that that is like more vulnerable or peeled back layers more than any Drake song. I mean, Drake has jumped out the window and did the Tootsie Slide. Hated that record, by the way. I think most Def has said stuff that really makes you think beyond a song. Most Def is dope. There's no question. He right. has. I, I, I don't I'm go to saying. that layer with Drake or that that space. Same you don't. But I was telling my man this earlier. These kids, most of their captions for the past 12, 13 years have been Drake lyrics. They think Drake is Nostradamus. <laughs> Drake is Malcolm Gladwell to these kids. Seriously. Like, like he's That's literally means when he puts out, I'm like, all right, my new caption is coming that's out. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like he says some really deep shit to a lot of these 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 kids. So I, I'm not, I, you know, Drake's hip hop as far as I know. Let's pay some bills, Taylor. All right, guys, let's take a break for a second. Listen. You need to start the year knowing you found the right life insurance to protect your family with Policy Genius. Okay, getting life insurance today means you'll have the peace of mind for the rest of 2024 and beyond, especially with your family. God forbid anything happens to you. But you know if anything happens to you, you want to make sure your family is good, they're safe, and they're protected. So if something were to happen, they're going to be okay. They'll be able to get back on their feet. 
Luckily, Policy Genius helps you compare your options from top companies, and their team of licensed experts is on hand to help talk you through it. I'm telling you, Policy Genius technology makes it easy to compare life insurance quotes from America's top insurers in just a few clicks to find your lowest price. Don't go searching. Uh, company by company. I mean, you don't even know what you're going to get into. You want to make sure all of it is organized in one place, okay? Even if you already have life insurance policy through work, it may not offer enough protection for your family's needs, and it may not follow you if you leave your job. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $292 per year or one for $1 million of coverage. Some options offer same-day approval and avoid unnecessary medical exams. Policy Genius has licensed, award-winning agents who can help you find the best fit for your needs. They work for you, not the insurance company. That means they don't have an incentive to recommend one insurer over another. So you can trust their guidance. No wonder they have thousands of five-star reviews on Google and Trustpilot. Save time and money and give your family a financial safety net with Policy Genius. Head to policygenius.com slash idiots or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com slash idiots. Out here swallowing up. Everybody, okay, it's the most fun I've had winning up to 25 times my money this football season, and now I can play during basketball season two. You just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projected stats, and place your entry. Prize Picks is bringing your gifts early this year with the 12 days of Picksmiths, all right? Starting December 14th, there will be a new promotion every day for new and existing customers. The daily promotions will range from payout boosts to discounted projections. Prize Picks even offers a reboot policy so that your entries stay in play even if one of your players gets injured, all right? For football and basketball games, if you have a player who exits the game in the first half and does not return in the second, that player is rebooted, okay? Prize Picks is the only daily fantasy sports platform with an injury insurance policy. Policy, okay, testing my skills on prize picks this season is the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into 250 with just a few taps. Okay, go to prizepicks.com slash idiots and use code idiots for a first deposit match up to hundred dollars. That's prizepicks.com slash idiots and use code idiots for a first deposit match up to hundred dollars. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I've been killing it on this. Okay, we got the Akash Singh locks. Um, I go with him. Sometimes I'm busting out my own. I'm up large. You can follow all my picks. You can trail my picks. You can literally do exactly what I do, and I would probably recommend that because your boy's up, 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 up. So that's what you need to do, all right? You go to prizepicks.com slash idiots. Use the code idiots for a first deposit match up to $100. That means you put 100 in, they match in it with 100. You get a free 100. You follow my picks, you're going to be rich. With quotes, but I hope you really do. <laughs> now, now, let's get back to the show. Church announcement show, T. <laughs> Yo, uh, the Life Tour. We're coming to Austin, Texas, the Moody Center. Okay, those tickets are on sale right now. Nashville, those tickets are on sale right now. And Phoenix, we added a second show. More cities, all on sale at theandrewshows.com. Thank you guys so much. Boston, those shows were fucking incredible. I appreciate y'all so much for always supporting me coming out. I'll see you all soon. Peace. Uh, for me, uh, Invisible Generals by my man Doug Melville is available everywhere you buy books right now, man. Make sure you go grab that. Uh, also, uh, what else? What else? Oh, Broke Down Profits starring Jonathan Majors, Dasha Polanco, Brian Tyree Henry, Donnell Rollins. That's available on Audible right now. And damn, I can't wait to give you all some updates on, uh, the second annual Black Effect Podcast Festival. That'll be happening in Atlanta uh, in April. So I was I, I can't wait to give y'all more updates about that. Huh? It's the third. Oh, it's not it's the second. second. Taylor's trying to tell me it's the third. It's the second. Our first one was last year. We were gonna do one in New York. We did we was gonna do one in New York. Yeah. And we nixed that, took it down south where it should have been from the start. But yeah, I can't wait to tell y'all about the uh, second annual Black Effect Podcast Festival, which is we'll be announcing shortly, okay? All right, let's get back to the show. What else we got, uh, Taylor? Well, uh, Andrew, you want to share your 50 Cent story? Yes. Yo. Talk to me about the GOAT, man. Met the GOAT, man. That was crazy. Was he was he psyched to see you? Because I know he's reposted. Yeah, he was, yeah he was dope. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah, he was just dope. And uh, yeah, just... 
great storyteller, charismatic as fuck. Like, you gonna bring you into the power universe? I don't think so. I don't think I don't think I don't think I'll be a new character of the power universe. You could be one of Tommy's cousins. Yeah. But I was telling the Talk guys, I was like, I, I I got it like from talking to him, you know, why he's been able to have so much success in entertainment as well. Cause like this is what we were talking about on Flagger, but like just imagine this. The 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 great American crime stories for decades have been the Italian mafia in America. That's right. Okay. We've kind of went through almost all of those stories. And when you're an Italian with a story or you wrote a story about the Italian mafia, you wanted two people to direct it. Scorsese, Ford Coppola, right? Like, and why? Because they're Italians, right? Mm -hmm. They understand the culture. They're not going to have your character that is a representation of you looking goofy out there. They actually know who you are. If it's some random white guy from fucking Maine who's writing a script about it, he's going to fuck up the, the food. He's going to fuck up the gestures. He's going to fuck up everything. I think the next line of American street or crime stories are going to come from the black community and the hip-hop community. And I think right. you've already started seeing this happen now. Now, if you're somebody who comes from the street, you're locked up, right? Who do you want writing your story? Do you want some white guy in Hollywood that makes movies, that says that he can do right by you, that has no fucking clue what the street code is, no clue what the street culture is, no clue what your character is supposed to wear, what colors he's not supposed to wear, what hand gestures he's supposed to do or not do? Or do you want a guy who's actually lived it? To me- To write? Not to write. You get professional produce. writers to do okay, it. To yeah, produce, yeah, yeah, yeah. to make sure that your story is safe. Someone yeah. who understands what it's like to be out there and yeah. also understands represent how important that is to be represented. When I'm seeing, when, you know, I'm talking to him about that, I'm like, oh, this is genius, bro. You got it, you figured it out. Like, of course, if you're a street dude, you're going, yeah, 50 gotta make my story. And if this is gonna be the next line of these American crime stories, like the Italian mafia, the run the Italian mafia had in American, like, you know, cinema, I mean, to me, it's, it's, you know, it's just, we're talking yeah, about I mean, tens listen, of millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars. and I'm only going to base it off stories that I know are real because I was about to say The Wire was fantastic, but that'd be lying because I never saw an episode of The Wire. But I'll just say it anyway. <laughs> the Wire was fantastic because that's, you know. But it was so good. Paid in full. Amazing story about, you know, the drug dealers in Harlem, the Alpos and the rich and poor, I think their names were, things like that. That was fantastic. I don't know who wrote that, but to your point, Dame Dash was an executive producer. You know what I mean? So it gives it a, 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 a Some credibility. credibility. Um, when you think about old... You don't need the writer to be from the culture. No, no. You just need a producer like John Singleton with Boys in the Hood. Exactly. The Hughes Brothers with Men in Society. And those guys weren't necessarily street guys, but they were black people who understood. Aware enough. Aware. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 50 is just in such a unique position, man, because, um, yeah, there's nobody who was looking at that genre like the gold it is. It is the next line of American rags to riches stories. Yeah. I mean, that's what was so seductive about the Italian mafia or these people who are come here with nothing and then yeah. go, it's the American dream. You go make tens of millions of dollars. And keep in mind, all those American dream families that we now see as like regal and royalty and aristocratic, all of them started in bootlegging or selling fucking opium or doing some sort of illegal business. Now, I'm not saying that you should do that to get on in America, but it's not dissimilar to the black American street crime that you will see now populating Hollywood cinema. And I mean, TV. that's why that's why so many black uh, people gravitated towards Goodfellas and gravitated towards yeah, Sopranos. Yeah, because like, yo, this is my way out Carlito's too. Way. Absolutely, gravitated towards Scarface. I wonder if they'll have. I wonder if black uh, street stories will have that same impact I mean, on other people. We saw uh, American well, Gangster. Well, think about like American this. Gangster, yeah. think, think about like this. What were what were Italians also? Uh, you could argue overrepresented in prior to the release of all those films. Pizza, correct. Music. They dominated popular music. Really. Oh, you heard a guy named Frank Sinatra? Frank Sinatra was Italian? <laughs> this guy is so crazy. <laughs> I did not know this Frank guy, Sinatra this was guy Italian. This guy is fucking crazy. Really? Wait, what were the Jersey Boys? Were they Italian? Yeah. Uh, Bobby Darren. I thought Frank Sinatra was Jewish. Bobby Darren was Jewish, wasn't he? 
No, Tony Bennett, I think, is Italian for sure. Tony Bennett is Italian? Yes, you know I that. hate this guy, bro. <laughs> you one what? Of, you're one of the people I probably hate more than anybody. <laughs> Who else is Italian, <laughs> yeah, yo? Yeah. Dion and the Belmonts were Italian. What they sing? What they sing? <laughs> Yo, don't indulge yeah. him, bro. Just move on. <laughs> yo, yo, you know who was fire? A fire Italian group? Shut up. Fucking Donatello, Raphael, Leonardo, <laughs> and Michelangelo with that dude Splinter on the bass? That yo. shit was fire. Yo. <laughs> I had no idea. I really didn't know Frank Sinatra was Italian. I thought Frank Sinatra was Jewish, straight up. What? I thought he was Jewish. Nah. Ain't he from Brooklyn? Nah, Hackensack or somewhere. Hackensack? Right, somewhere right over the river. Maybe Jersey City. Frank Sinatra's from Jersey? Yeah. Definitely. Wow. Frankie Valley's the guy Jersey who I Frankie was thinking about. Frankie Valley. Great I thought Frankie Valley was Latino. It's a fine line. <laughs> he is, right? I'm not making this up. Yo, why don't you get swallowed up? <laughs> why don't you get swallowed <laughs> up? Google right Frankie now? Valley's ethnicity, yo. He's the Italian. I don't have to Google it. Frankie Valley is very Italian. Very Italian? Yeah. That's yes. crazy. Anyway, point is. What was the point before you fucking derailed this whole goddamn thing in your knee-high Timberlands? 50 is going is the king. Italian. Of, Italian? Yeah. Of course. 50 is the king of street. Uh, oh, my, my, the point I was making was that Italians were so overrepresented in pop music mm -hmm. and pop culture, right? Then, then their stories are also represented in Hollywood culture. Right now, who's overrepresented for their percentage of people in the country in music? Mm. Black people. Black people. Mm, hip, -hop, yeah. hip hop, at least maybe before this year, was the popular genre of music. And now you're gonna also see those stories told as well. So the setup looks beautiful. It looks amazing. It looks amazing. Um, yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see what happens. I mean, there's so many stories out there. BMF story, 50 caught that, you know, and you can't even be mad at him because there's nobody in Atlanta who, you know, had the muscle TV and film wise that 50 has has garnered, you know what I mean? Like I've heard plenty of people say they wanted to do the BMF story, but didn't get it done. Fifty got it done. Fifty need to do the New York story. Fifty need to do that would be the one. And also that big studio that he just closed on. Did you hear about that? Was that is that happening? Is yeah, that, like he oh, got wow. he got approved for it. Yeah. yeah, he did. Fifty, you need to holler at my guy Sean Penn, man. Sean Penn, uh, formerly known as Little Sean the rapper. When you talk about you know, New York street stories, because I agree with you. There hasn't been, like, a classic New York street tale. I think Payton Fifth, Full was 50 the one. is sitting on the New York wire. He is sitting on the New York... What he told... I mean, when he told me that night is the New York wire. If it's about shit that happened in Queens when he was coming up? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's sitting on the New York 100%, 100%. wire. 100%. Say again? He is a shit raising king. It's well, supposed to be, like, a play off of it? Nah, he could... You don't got to play. Oh. Isn't Raising like, Canaan based off? Nah, Raising Canaan is based off 50 Cent's character from Power. I know, but I thought he added some of his... I mean, he probably does a little yeah. bit. What I'm saying is there is a almost biopic you could... You'd have to get permission and the rights a lot of people, and there's going to be a, you know, a lot of stuff maybe exposed that shouldn't be, but... Now, it was some wild shit going down. Oh, I, my God. I'm going to tell you what up. Between Queens and Brooklyn, that's why I said you got to highlight my man Sean Penn, because Sean Penn grew up, you know, in the, in the, the, the Brooklyn era... The, the late 80s, 90s, when that I mean, shit was no joke. You know what I mean? How I would do it? How I would do it if I'm him? Bro to bro? Bro to bro? Yeah, bro to so bro. So I would, you know how the wire went, oh, here is the hood, here's the school system, here's the docks, here's the police, yeah. whatever. So you start, and the story can start in Queens. It can start with all these figures, these OGs, et cetera. You have other figures from these different boroughs popping up, so the characters are introduced, but the main story is over there in Queens. Then the next season could be main stories in Brooklyn, but you still have the Queens people popping in. Next can be Harlem. Yeah. Next can be the Bronx, right? Like Next can be whatever else it is, and... The final maybe can incorporate all of them, but there's an unbelievable story here. What they say? They say New York got eight million stories. Yes, sir. <laughs> Need to tell some yes, of this sir. shit. The crazy thing is you could almost do, 50 wouldn't even have to do like one. He could do like how you, you see Bro, Marvel, you could do what five if. different Yeah, you could do something series. new every episode. I love Marvel What If, right? Yeah, I should have. Because in 30 minutes, I get a beginning, middle, and ending. Yeah. I mean, I get whole world saved in 30 minutes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't even need a whole movie. You could do like a whole anthology series just based off New York's New York street stories. Totally. I just like the idea of like what I thought was so epic about Avengers is that they mapped this out decades ago. 
and that each movie slowly pushed the story toward this moment where all the storylines were gonna collide and then they executed it with perfection. Imagine you could do that with New York street stories. Yes. Like to me, that's, that would be an epic undertaking and you need guys that really know what they're doing with the storytelling because intertwining all those things, like putting these little Easter eggs that aren't gonna pay off for three seasons, that's like some George R. R. Martin Game of Thrones shit. Like imagine we had New York City Street Game of Thrones. It, it Literally that detailed storytelling. Yeah. And, and uh, it's, it's there. Like, listen, you can't bro, see it. it, it, it you, you, you ever watch Mr. Yo. Society? Fantastic. Mm. Boys in the Hood, fantastic. Yeah. Like, you can get into that type of detail. But here's the thing. He was telling me stories that, and I'm from New York. I'm born and raised in New York. As familiar as some of these characters are to maybe you grew up in Queens, yeah. you're aware of it. And even you're a little younger. I was grew up in Queens? I mean... Far Rock. Far Rock, wait. That is Queens. Stop. It's Queens, but it's a little bit removed from- the Queens 50 talking about yeah. now. <laughs> I mean, G-Unit was in Far Rock? Yeah, the, the tank tops. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Flip flops. See, we the beach talk. towels. This, nah. one, this one 50 was boo-boo. Yes. Oh. That's what, there was dudes like that no, no. running well, niggas off the street I, I guess. I guess what I'm trying to say is, I guess what I'm trying to say is, what was I trying to say? You said Alex tried to hear the you know, dudes running dudes off the street. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now you do it. Now you do it in Indian eye. And now you agree. <laughs> Alex said like, there's dudes running dudes off Wait, the street. Wait, what was I just, why did I bring that up? Because you were saying now Alex ain't really from the hood. That's what you said. No, uh, what I say? What, what was I, I saying? I want to glorify that stuff. So you're right, Charlamagne. What are you saying? Huh? What was I saying? You was talking about how... You were talking about 50 and the stories from Queens. The shit you was talking about. You said you may be familiar with some of these Oh, yeah. People. I didn't even know these dudes. Like, I'm from New York City. Mm -hmm. And there's some names I recognize and then others that I was like, I honestly, I don't know who that is. Nah, but 50 can do it. Yeah, <laughs> he's going. No, nah, what am I talking about? He can do it. 50 is going to do it. Yeah, it'll it's be crazy. It's going to get done. It'll be crazy. Okay? Salute to Fifth, man. I don't even think people really appreciate what Fifth has done in the TV space, yo. You know how It's hard to get shit made, It's bro. hard to get one thing made. This man has gotten, I can't even remember how many seasons of Power, the four shit with Tommy, Raising Kanan, the, the, uh, the Ghost series, BMF, fucking, uh, what was the shit on ABC? Um, uh, that was based off the dude from Mount's Corner. Oh, the lawyer. The yeah. lawyer. Uh, Isaac Wright Jr. Isaac Wright Jr. Salute to Isaac Gray. I know Isaac really well, man. Yeah, I bet. Good guy. Good guy. Oh, Do you want to talk about the politics? What happened in politics? Oh, Trump, the, the landslide. Young landslide. Wasn't a landslide, though. Stop it. Here's my thing. Stop and I, I've, it. I've said this a million times. I think Republicans right now are doing themselves a disservice by not pushing Trump to the side and putting Nikki Haley as the GOP front runner. What? And the reason I say that, because if you look at what happened in Iowa... 50% of Republicans in Iowa voted against Trump because fucking DeSantis had like 20-something percent and Nikki had like 19, almost 20 percent. And they said that the people who voted for Nikki were mostly Democrats and independents. It's not a sure bet for Donald Trump in the general election. I, it's not. Even against sleepy goddamn Joe. Charlamagne. I'm trying to tell you. Charlamagne. And it, and it, it was the lowest... Turnout for a caucus ever in Iowa. Because there's a lot of people that's just like, I told y'all already, there's some people who, 2024 is all about Trump, who's the criminal, Joe Biden, who's the coward, in the couch. And a lot of people are not energized by a Trump Biden rematch and they stay at home. It's the lowest turnout for a caucus in Iowa in years. It also was freezing cold, so that. Could be part of it. It's Don't freezing cold. cold. Nah, they, it was like son. It was crazy. They're budget. dealing with the dragon Z out there. It's like it's not even like a. It's not even like a. Fu yeah, you the can't get the dragon Z. Dragon Z is balls oh, on your fucking no, come mouth. On. Come on. <laughs> dragon Z <laughs> balls on your mouth no, and head. Fucking Z. Am I like some little screen of COVID? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I thought I gave it away because I, I started you did tomorrow. Too. I started you smiling. also almost gave it away. <laughs> I didn't know. See, look, fifty-one percent, but then Ron DeSantis twenty, and, and and Morning Joe had a really good point. Morning Joe was like, 
if if Barack Obama took four years off and he was the basically the incumbent coming back, he'd be like at ninety something percent in Iowa or some shit like that. Are we sure of that? That's what that's what he was saying. I mean, that's what he was saying. Like Trump, fifty one percent. All I'm saying is it's not a sure thing in a general election. That's all I'm saying. There's a lot. There's a lot of baggage that comes with Trump. Of course, we got the ninety one criminal charges and all of that shit like that. But I think a lot of women feel a way about abortion. About Roe v. Wade getting taken away. Yeah. I'm just saying, if Republicans really want to win, yeah, they need they a chill. Winning a landslide. They need to chill with that. Nikki might be the one. Why? Nikki's saying we're not touching that. What you mean? Like, no, I'm just saying. I think that Nikki comes with less baggage in a general election, and you already know Republicans gonna fall in line. And if she can pick up some some Democrats and some Independents, the only problem is that she doesn't capture the politically disillusioned voter. In other words, the voter who's upset at the system because she's a system quarterback. She's part of the system. Yeah. So I think, and I think that there's a lot of concern about the system. I don't, I don't think they want to replace Biden with someone who is essentially just like Biden, who's going to tell the company though. line. Well, we have Trumpito. Yeah, but Trump, uh, you get Trump back in there, man. Don't you want World War III? We all just go down in a blaze of glory. It's going to be a revenge tour. Like, that's my whole thing. Like, I can't do four years of revenge tour, bro. Like, you got to get back to fucking making America great, bro. Like, you got to fucking get, you got to have some policy, some legislation, something, bro. Like, hey, you can't go in there and just wage war on all your political enemies. Plus, I'm not going to have a job. He's going to shut the media the fuck down. You think? Oh, 100. He's already said that. What are, you talk, what are we talking about? He said that already. No. He said that. He said, I'm going to find a way. He said the press charges on the head of MSNBC. This is the same guy who wanted to get the motherfucking Lauren Michaels locked up, bro. Because they make fun of him on SNL. What are we talking about? Good. Like, eh? That's fire. It's all funny games that so you make a joke about his daughter on stage. I'm not going to talk about, well, which one? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. I just think, and, and I, I just think Republicans are, are really dropping the ball on an opportunity to really scriffing the party. You know what I mean? If you really want to take the party back from Trump, if it's really not the MAGA party, like y'all say. So you like you Haley. like Haley? I don't like her. I just think it's politically smart to do it. But we know what they're playing for. They're not playing for. You know, they're not they're not playing for the next four years. What they're they playing, playing for, for forever. <laughs> <laughs> you put you put Trump for in office, kids. you got it forever. So I know Iowa doesn't represent the rest of the country, but if she only got twenty percent and Trump got fifty, you think that that entire fifty is going to be like? Santa's they're gonna got come another out. twenty plus. Okay, 50% so fifty percent of all Republicans in Iowa voted against Trump. Yes, but for also fifty voted for him with all the baggage. Yeah, but I that think comes those, with it. those people, like like I said with Nikki, a lot of those people were Democratic and Independents. I think a lot of those people just stay home, <laughs> in, in in the general election. I just do. I just think a lot of those people just stay home. They they, they had another statistic that said one third of Republicans in Iowa don't even like Trump. Uh, I real I think the vote in the Republican Party is it's Trump or nothing or anything but Trump. Those are the two votes. Hmm. It's never usually like that, though. I know. So it's They're not as fractured. We're, yeah, we're Republicans is usually fall in line, man. Yeah. So now, if you have Nikki Haley, there's going to be those any uh, Trump or nothing people that are going to stay home, so she won't win the general either. I don't know. That's you. God damn. God damn. Well, I just I don't know. I think Nikki's the safest bet. What do you think, Chris? Uh, I agree with Andrew. I mean, I think a lot of the sentiment is not even directed at a particular candidate. It's just frustration. And I think, system. yeah, DeSantis, the system. DeSantis at least is bucking the system a bit, and he kind of, like, resents is the he? system. He's like a super system guy. Not really in terms of, like, what he did in Florida. Like, his decisions went against what the government wanted in Florida, or not what the, the Democratic federal government. government. The time. Yeah, yeah. He's so willing think, to take more political chances. than. But he's also, like, been exposed as kind of a goofball. Right. So, and people don't like goofballs. <laughs> I think Donald Trump is too risky in a general. Catch that. <laughs> I think it's the same level of risk for Trump as it is Biden. I really do. I think but both parties need to move away from both of them. I think Republicans need to move away from Trump. Democrats need to move away from Biden. I just think it's too much of a risk if you're trying to win. It's a, I mean, it sounds ridiculous to say because it's duh, but it's a 50-50 toss-up with either one of them. So who do the Democrats move to? I have no idea. They, they don't have no Somebody bench. better come up with something soon. Well... Some well, meet me at the crossroads, and you don't get lonely. <laughs> it means that you just never know when you're dealing with people that age, man. 
Oh, I you think, think it might? You don't know. You definitely have oh, point. I think God. all these things you're dealing with. Oh, my you're God. You're not just dealing with goddamn. What? I had to scratch. Goddamn, bro. <laughs> Come on. I had to scratch. Scratch yourself up about Nikki. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's crazy. This is a wild boy. I know. This is one of the wildest boys ever in the history of goddamn you know, boys, Nikki man. Nikki could get this that popcorn, This guy worked himself huh? up and fucking get that popcorn, went bro. for it on the goddamn pod. That's what I do. Boy. I had to adjust. <laughs> Jesus I had to adjust. Yo, chill out, Taylor. Jesus I had to adjust. Chill out, Taylor. Jesus. Taylor, chill out. Wow, calm down, yo. I've never seen no shit like that ever in my life. That was insane. what I do? That was insane. You I just scratched my fucking went for it. Right what testicle do you think? sack. I got something that'll get you soft. What do you think of Lil Nas X apologizing <laughs> um, the Christians? Us Christians don't care. Us Christians don't care, Apparently, Charlotte. They did. Us Christians don't care. We don't think about Lil Nas X. And we won't let... Uh, <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> us Christians don't care. And we won't let Lil Nas X's antics uh, frustrate us. Can I show you what he said, though? Because how yeah, people are getting I saw upset. what he said. <laughs> <laughs> but we're, us Christians don't care. You can't go to Bro, double hell. You can't hell. fart when you talk about Lil Nas X. Great. I'm flirting. <laughs> 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 that is flirting. Come on, yeah. get it fucked up, yo. If you flirt, love. if you fart around another man, yo, that's flirting, yo. Come on, yo. Okay, especially if you look him in the eyes while that shit is still going. <laughs> yeah, while your butthole's open. You looking at him? That's flirting. <laughs> Do y'all? <laughs> what? What? Go to asking Wait, I have Hold a on. question. Oh. When we got another ad too. Yeah, we got one more. When the doctor um had to test you out. <laughs> Why yeah, you? That shit was crazy. <laughs> so, I'm does, still not over that. He, did it, does your asshole queef too? Like how women. What? Yo, tell her. Tell her, tell her. What are you saying right now? You, you know, you had never made a woman's vagina queef before? I just did. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you farting so much? If you got a, if you queefing, you need to get your vagina queef. refurbished. That was a queef. <laughs> refurbished. Your vagina need renovations if it's making too much noise. That is true. Vagina if it creaks, it's too if big. your vagina creaks. What? Big as hell. You got a creaky vagina. Big as hell. I yeah, you say need to get about me at big all. as hell. All I'm that air going the in there, then that shit just making all that noise. You didn't answer my question. No, but what if does it look like? If your car was making that sound, you take it to get checked. Take it in. Take it in. <laughs> you need to take if it your check. tire did what that. That shit is. If your tire did that, you would take your problem. tire to get It is a problem. Immediately, yo. The transmission's Straight broke. Straight up. If you heard that noise. You just any- flirting <laughs> with Lil Nas X. Now y'all don't want to talk about it. If you heard it. that noise anywhere in your house, you're going <laughs> yo, to get it yo. fixed. If your dishwasher did that it. shit, you would, you would get, get it fixed, yo. You would. Okay, so why when your vagina makes noises like that, y'all just chalk it up? You know what I mean? No, yeah. go, go get, get that your shit vagina fixed. fixed. <laughs> How much does it cost? Yeah, like making noise. And when you yeah, in the doctor's like office, he said, "What kind of noise is it making?" <laughs> <laughs> you know, technically that means y'all dick isn't big enough because it's too much air. Oh, that's what you tell me. No, technically that means you. Is that might, what it means? Technically, you need to be refurbished. Yeah, it could be that you don't have any elasticity and your or, shit just stays open. Your vagina or, wasn't always that big. Or, Ask yourself, why is it or, so big Or y'all just got skinny dicks. So oh, why is your vagina so big? But why isn't your vagina snatch? Yeah, I don't it, know. I'm, first of all, y'all not talking about me. I'm just saying, it snatches, a, it snatches on a tampon. Why? Maybe it just is slow to snatch. You got a slow snatch. Maybe. Your snatch True. back is slow. You're not talking about me. You were the one bringing this up. opens up like that big shit off Never Ending Story. You ever seen that big ass shit that they used to ride on Never Ending Story? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Etray you. What's it called? Etray you. Yeah, that's exactly what a queef sounds that like. That movie, man. What, no, Etray you is the star. Never Ending Vagina, man. Queefs forever. Let's play some bills, Taylor. Do you want to answer my question? What, what question do you want to answer? Take the answer. Leave Queen Laquifa alone. <laughs> I was thinking that too, and I didn't say it. That's so funny. <laughs> I was thinking it as well. <laughs> Let Yo, Chief Queef have her moment. That's not, first of all, you, y'all tried it because it's not. If you got a group, it's a tribe called Queef. It is. No, okay. Oh, he's on fire. <laughs> <laughs> the guy's on fire right now. Don't stop. <laughs> Do not stop. <laughs> oh. You don't want to talk about your ass, though. Why don't right? we talk about that guy you beefing with all the time, the Queef Stanfield or whatever his name is? <laughs> 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 you see Queef Davidson stand up? <laughs> no, I have. <laughs> <laughs> Charlotte, watch your break. <laughs> What's the no? It's the miracle. You want to do squares, face? Yeah, I got Chelsea? you. 
Thank you again to Squarespace for supporting this week's episode of the podcast. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for building your brand and growing your business online. Stand out with a beautiful website. Engage with your audience and sell anything, your products, content you create, and even your time. Upload, organize, and access all your content from one place. With the new asset library, you're able to manage all your files from one central hub and then use them across the Squarespace platform. Get started with one of our professional website templates with designs for every category and use case. Then customize your look, update content, and add features to fit your unique needs. You can make any Squarespace template do what you want so your idea, brand, or business stands out online on any device. Use insights to grow your business. Learn where your site visits and sales are coming from and analyze which channels are most effective. Improve your website and build a marketing strategy based on your top keywords or most popular products and content. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to www.squarespace.com slash idiots to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash idiots to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Let's do some Ask an Idiots, Taylor Gang. Okay, Ask an Idiots. Uh, ooh, Mr. Cruz says, if you would have one conspiracy answered for certain, what would it be? I think I know yours, Schultz. What would it be? Um, One conspiracy answered yeah, for one certain? one conspiracy answered for certain. What would it be? Oof. I mean, holy shit, there's a lot. I mean... The aliens. That's my top number one. Yeah, who built the pyramids, JFK. JFK would be really interesting. What's the conspiracy with JFK? Uh, who shot him? Who I shot him? Who shot him? Separate the weak from the ops. I thought they knew who shot him. I mean, that's a conspiracy. No. They don't know who shot JFK? Yes, they do. Nah, they don't. Right, they they said multiple shooters, but potentially. There was only one to the head, though, right? Nah, you got... Ripped up. My man got Damn. blasted. Clubbed Damn. up. Damn. Yup. They're going to change that story in the history books anyway. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so there's a bunch. I mean. They're going to say he was just off for a drive. And he wanted to clear his head. Yo. <laughs> this guy. Yo. <laughs> That's the way shit is going now. That's the way shit is going, bro. That's what how that that's how that story is gonna be told in a, couple, a few years. Watch, long, long words. <laughs> the new sex in books in the, in what the about South, yeah. what about Abraham Lincoln? How are they gonna tell his story? He was too tall. He was too he, tall. He caught a stray. He, he caught one for right. someone it else. It wasn't even meant for him. It wasn't, meant it wasn't for even him. fucking meant for him. Damn, yo. bro. It wasn't even meant for him, man. Yeah. Not even a little bit. Mine would definitely be extraterrestrials, though. Why? Hundred percent. Um, just because I want to know, I want to know about Roswell. I want to know about Area Fifty One. I think that's the same shit, though. I'm yes. not. I want to know about Roswell and Area Fifty One. I want to know what's going on in what they call the new Area Fifty One in Alaska. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to know. I want to know. I want to know what happened in Miami in the mall for real. <laughs> like, I want to know how many times they visited us. I want to know if that whole shit with Richard Nixon was true. Because remember, there's this thing about how Richard Nixon actually had a meeting with extraterrestrials, and they. Reagan. No, it was Nixon. It was Nixon. Reagan Reagan said, I forgot, but it was during a speech and he was having a conversation with, about, to Russia and he was like, what if we had a real threat from another planet? We would have to come together. But Nixon, they said, uh, had a meeting with extraterrestrials and they did like this whole treaty, which is, <laughs> it's going crazy. What is? <laughs> you your ass. Why is it's not going crazy? That shit is going crazy. <laughs> nah, you just you make the sound effect loud on here too. Like I want people to be able to hear what the fuck we're hearing. Like this is insane. Why is that insane? It is. I I, I respect your freedom to fart anyway, though. I do. Wait, why? You wouldn't do it? Nah, I don't. I don't fart in my clothes. Um, why? What tightness? I just don't fart in my clothes. So you hold it in all day? I'm not really. A, I think it's a habit. Like what? my butthole knows when to fart. Like I fart in the bathroom when I'm taking a shit, or sometimes in the shower. I've, I don't fart in my clothes. I don't even you never get the urge to fart at all. That no. is, you're I an fart alien. Nonstop. <laughs> yeah. You're yeah. the alien. Yeah, you right? might be an alien. <laughs> That's did, crazy. Didn't you say your farts are out of control now because of? Yeah, but I didn't say I farted in my clothes. I would think that means you're farting in your clothes now. No, I fart, fart while I'm on the toilet. 
for when I'm in the shower. And I can just feel it. Like, it's just so, like... I feel like you know when it's silent or not. He don't know when it's silent. Me? I can control the smell. Yeah, the smell is the crazy part. But I can control that. If you guys want it to not smell, I can keep the smelling. You just... <laughs> I can't. You just blame it on other people. We no, are I so can't. so fucking juvenile. Why is this podcast so juvenile? Oh, what about Epstein? Of course I'd want to know that. What, what What do we need to know? Who's on there? Who's, who's that? Who's on it? Who is he working for? Oh, like who? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Nah, that shit stink. Buggy, Schultz. God damn. <laughs> yeah. Hold the fuck on. Okay, shit. Raphael. That sound like that drag. That's that Dragon Z, boy. <laughs> that's that shit that fucking gets you sick. Um, the underscore corner says, can y'all combined... Might. <coughs> God damn, Angel. <laughs> 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 you smell that shit, Taylor? Duh. It lingers now. Over God damn. Where you People... going, yo? Taylor. We need Come to open on, up. Yo. People going to think it's you, yo. They are. That shit smell crazy. Can y'all combined might beat up the rock? Yeah. Yeah, we'll fuck the rock up. Yeah. No disrespect, Rock. We fuck with you. Yeah, I mean both of us together. With nah, all we, due respect. Yeah, yeah, we got yeah. you. You can't be sorry. Both. We're world class <laughs> fighters. I don't this see it. This We're world class fighters, yeah. bro. This ain't wrestling when nah, we it's real. Our turn. We getting it's after real. you. Bro. We're getting and, after it. And the thing with the rock. I don't see it, guys. All right. I don't see it. So. Listen, push come to shove. He's huge. And? I don't know if you've seen him at first. He's and huge. And we're not going to fight fair. Yeah. Why would you think we're going to fight fair? Why do you think he's going to fight fair? Because he's the Because it's two on one. Yeah. If Andrew jump on his back, put him in a chokehold, you know I'm going. Where, Load the belt, baby. Where, what, you, what, what, you gonna, what, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? What are you going to do below the belt? Yeah. That's where the vulnerability at. I'm going down where the vulnerability is at. Okay? Wait, what are you going to do he'll, there, though? He'll feel like a rock bottom when I finish with his ass. God damn it, damn, Charlemagne. Man. <laughs> what in the fuck is going hey, on here? Yo, stop the pod before Charlemagne comes out the closet. He yo. just turned into a urologist. Just, yo, he really did. <laughs> he did it, son. Yo, God what the damn. fuck? I'm telling you, he don't want no, we'll, we'll fuck the rock up. Salute to the rock, though. We love the rock. Love you, rock. Rock is a great guy, but it's just a hypothetical question. Me and Andrew together. Come on, yo. You, you getting beat up. Uh, ooh. Schultz, which rapper would you do a skit for their album? Andre 3000. Mmm. You'd be farting? Yep. Instead of playing the flute, you'd be farting your ass off? Nah, there's a bunch of rappers I would. I was on one somebody's album. Whose album? They used a clip from me. Fuck, I forget the guy's name. I think he's one of Cole's writers. Oh, I saw that shit. This it's too easy, man. It's too easy. It's too fucking easy. Let's do one more. Okay. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Once one trait your significant other's parents like most about you. Keep oh, going. Nino Blue. What's up, Nino? Uh, what's a movie? Oh, what's a movie or franchise you want to make a comeback? I like that. There was a better one. There was we could do that one, but there was a good one up here we should do too. This is All right, go one. up. Let's do what that. What is one. one valuable thing you have learned from one another? Ooh, Latoya Maz. What is one valuable thing you have learned from one another? Uh, with Andrew, I would say perseverance. Um, definitely perseverance and definitely betting on yourself. Even though I, I've, I've always known these things, it's so interesting when you see somebody truly roll the dice on they self in a unique way. Because... For everything Andrew did, it could have backfired. True. You know what I'm saying? True. Like, if you make a commitment to say, fuck that, throw in my middle finger to cancel culture, I'm going to start this shit called flagrant, and I'm going to be as flagrant as possible. It's for all the loose booty assholes. Facts. Right? Hmm. And I'm going to do this shit. It could have worked. It could not have worked. Facts. And I don't know if you did this on purpose, but it started with sports. Yeah. It yeah. <laughs> turned into... What is turned into Shit now? Talk. So yeah. for me, it would be a perseverance and just a, just just re, a reminder to to bet on yourself because it, it, Andrew did everything that they tell you to do in Hollywood. Mm. You know what I mean? Get the agent, go on the, the scroll, you know, see what roles are out there for you, yada yada yada. And you know, this was during the whole diversity, equity, and inclusion wave. Yeah, it was no place for a straight white male. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and so Andrew said, "Fuck it, 
I'm going to make a place for straight white males to feel comfortable. And not even just straight white males, just people, period, to feel comfortable. Yeah. People who were just tired of the, the, just the, the politically correctness. Just yeah. normal people. Yeah. Just normal. And um, God fearing people. <laughs> and it worked. Yeah. In a major, major way. I would say for Charlemagne, it's um, you say you could be a man of the people or a man of the industry, but you can't be both. You would always say that. And that really stuck with me. That's true. And uh, until you create your own industry. Exactly. Then you, I mean, listen, there are times you can always work with them, but your priority should be the people always. The people. And I think that that has always resonated with me. That was maybe the best piece of. I don't even know if it was advice. It was just something, a game I soaked up. And it was just like, yeah, you have to make the things. You have to create for yourself, but with the intentions of satisfying the people with that thing you create, not satisfying the execs or whatever, because that's going to be the most authentic version of what you create. And uh, that is, that will set you free. That like completely liberated me. That's right. And that's why I said my, my intention always now for the rest of my life is just to be a service, man. However I can be a service, that's what I'm here to do. Huh. That's it. Um, scroll down. What was the one we was about to answer? Uh, what movie or fr what franchise you want back? No, the other one. The next one. What yeah. movie or TV franchise would you want to bring back? Easy call. Go. Girlfriends, dead through thick and thin. Greatest fucking TV show ever. And they did not give us any closure whatsoever. There's so many loose ends to tie up. Okay, do Tony and Joan become friends again? Does Tony come back? Does Joan get married? Does uh, Lynn's music career take off? What, Taylor? Why don't you try to produce a movie for it? Mm -hmm. You can sum it all up in a film. A film of miniseries. You know, Mara Brocka Kill wants to do a film. Tracy Ellis Ross wants to do a miniseries. You know, I interviewed the whole cast of Girlfriends about three, four years ago. Um, Tracy Ellis Ross... Uh, Persia White, Jill Marie Jones, and Golden Brooks. And 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 uh Tracy wants it to be a mini series. I mean, as I said, either one, either one, Mara says she got the story. She knows how she wants to close it. She knows how she wants to put a bow on it. I don't see it's a no-brainer for me. It's owned by CBS Paramount. Paramount Plus, y'all need that. Y'all saw what the Best Man um holiday or whatever, whatever the new Best Man was called. Best Man Final Chapters. You saw what that did. On uh, for NBC Peacock, girlfriends would do that for y'all times a billion. So I just don't understand what's the hold up. I saw Kelsey Grammer recently because he's an executive producer. Kelsey Grammer said that they having talks about it. Make it happen. Make it happen, man. That's the one. Girlfriends is the one. That is the one. It checks off all the boxes that y'all like to be checked off in a nice organic way. What about you, Schultz? What would you bring back? Fuck. Hooey. I don't know. That's a great question. I don't know. Seinfeld? <laughs> yeah, Seinfeld. <laughs> they are bringing Seinfeld back. Shut up. No, I'm dead ass. <laughs> Look it up. I'm dead ass. They're bringing Seinfeld back. No, they're not. Google it right now, Seinfeld reboot. Why am I going to waste And after you Google it, I want you to say you were right. <laughs> Again, <laughs> Alex. Google it. They're doing a Seinfeld reboot. No, they're not. I'm telling you, they're doing a Seinfeld reboot. Yeah. No, the Seinfeld revival isn't confirmed. I know Jerry. <laughs> so now? I know Jerry. I'm telling you, it's coming back. Maybe I wasn't supposed to feel that. <laughs> Maybe I wasn't. You know who told me it was coming back? Michael Richards. Did he really? Yes. He said, y'all niggas better watch. <laughs> All right, yo, we out here. As always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. But if you think we're just a couple of idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. <laughs>